the third webinar in our Big Five series, A Clear View of Reading. Um, we're so happy you joined us today to learn about another one of the five essential components of reading, fluency. I'm Janet Pedrazzi, and I am the Director of Academic Content here at Lexplore and also a public school teacher for over 23 years. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time tonight and are not familiar with Lexplore, we are a three-minute reading assessment company that uses AI and eye tracking to determine a child's reading ability. And uniquely with the power of eye tracking and AI, we can even report silent reading fluency, which is pretty exciting. Um, uh, it is our mission here at Lexplore to support parents and teachers in reading instruction with materials and tips. And we offer free tools and free training and instructional videos. And you can access all of that on our um, website at lexplore.com and also our Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, um, and our website, I said that already. Uh, we're excited to partner again with Lauren Gibbs. Uh, she, has been, she has taught for 14 years in a variety of learning scenarios, virtual, homeschool, and the traditional classroom. She has a multiple sub subject teaching credential, a master's in education, and a certificate in teaching reading. She is currently reading, a reading intervention specialist, working with students from K through 12th grade. Welcome again, Lauren. Thank you, so glad to be here. Before we get started, we're just going to talk about a few housekeeping items. Um, we have muted the participants for clear audio purposes. Um, and also, please put your questions in the Q&A um, at the bottom. We will address them there or we will save them for the end during the Q&A portion. So please hang on if we do go over a few minutes past the 30 minutes because we will be answering questions at the end. Um, we will also send you a link to, to the recording of this in case you, um, you can't hang on. And also, it will, that recording will be available on our website. Um, also, on the final um, slide, you will have contact, my contact information and Lauren's contact information if you have any questions and you would like to reach out. Okay, please feel free to do so. Okay, so we're going to get started. Just going to stop my video. Okay, so each in each of our webinars, we are going to focus on one of the five essential components of reading development. And today we're focusing on fluency. We will begin with discussing a little bit about what fluency is but then we will give ideas for ways to improve a student's reading fluency and also um, show you some of our free resources we have available for you. The five essential reading components, um, the five essential components of reading instruction are phonological awareness, phonics, fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary. And we um, are always stressing that each of these components should be taught explicitly. Okay, so let's take a look at how these components work together. Phonological awareness is the foundation to reading development. And in this stage, children are developing an awareness of sounds and how to manipulate those sounds or segment them or change um, to segment them to change, to change words. Uh, this skill is necessary for decoding and spelling. Phonic skills are the rules for the sound symbol relationships. And students learn to identify the letters or the letter combinations and then translate them into sounds to blend to read words. Now these phonics and decoding skills help students read unknown vocabulary words. And then also there is some reciprocation there because when a reader has vast vocabulary, more of the words on the page are familiar and therefore more easily decoded. Um, the development of phonics and vocabulary skills leads to fluency. Children must be reading fluently to establish meaning from a text. So here you can see how the components are dependent on each other for reading proficiency. Fluent reading is a combination of speed, 
accuracy and prosody, or prosody is another word for reading with expression. Um, in order to read fluently, readers must have substantial word recognition, word recognition skills and vocabulary. When children begin to read, they first learn the letter sounds and then they, they learn to blend those sounds to read the words, right? So when a beginner readers are learning to read, they often need to stop at each word, translate the letters into sounds, then blend the sounds to read this, the words, a multi-step process that requires a lot of mental effort. After repeated exposure of reading the words and the spelling patterns, students begin to automatically recognize those words without needing to decode them. So once the reader is reading words automatically, the mental efforts can take a shift. The mental efforts can then be pointed to deriving meaning from the text instead of being focused on decoding the words. So while now fluency does pave the way for comprehension, it's not everything that you need for comprehension. Comprehension does require additional thinking habits um, to deeply understand the text. Uh, reading with, con with connotation and expression, that also helps with comprehension. Okay, here's my graphic that I used um, the past two nights as well. Um, and you can see here that the fluency, it shows the instructional focus does not begin to, um, until first grade. But fluency is always being taught. It's being taught through modeling, read alouds, stories, storytelling, um, poetry readings. These are all the early stages of giving children a sense of what fluency is and how reading should sound. These experiences give them that understanding of what they need to work towards as readers. So developing fluency at the earliest stages of child or it begins at the earliest stages of child development. When, when we're reading aloud to our children, we are modeling how to read with rhythm, expression, and phrasing. These early experiences will transfer into understanding how they should sound when they begin to read and help establish that inner expressive reading voice for meaning, which is essential for silent reading. Um, when you're doing these songs in poetry, it's important that the print should be visible when, um, so that the children can follow along. They begin to get a sense of following along while singing and reciting with, exp with expression. When children are learning to sing songs and recite poems, they're speaking fluently. So speaking fluently is laying that groundwork uh, for reading fluently. All of the literacy experiences build the necessary foundation for fluent readers. So in this webinar, we're going to talk about fluency in two parts. The first part is going to be word recognition and automaticity. And then the second part will be prosody or reading with expression. So students, so what is automaticity? Students develop um, word recognition skills over time with practice. So automaticity is recognizing words and being able to read them smoothly. At the very early stages of reading instruction, we teach phonics and decoding. But fluency instruction begins with these lessons. So when teaching an isolated phonics skill, students should have the opportunity to learn the skill and then have the repeated practice um, in reading and reading that skill within the context, meaning within sentences or within a short text. Repeated exposure through this initial phonics instruction will build the word recognition that facilitates automaticity. So um, accuracy. Accuracy is the key to becoming uh, fluent readers and comprehending text. Um, fluency assessments and drills of the past often, um, often stressed the need to read faster. And I, I think we could probably all think back, and I have one specific memory that I remember in fourth grade with my headphones on in the back of the room, 
being told I needed to read faster. And it was, it can be very stressful and cause readers to skip words and read um, some words inaccurately. So it's, an imp it's important that we focus on accuracy by listening, listening very carefully when our children are reading and stopping to offer support when a word is read inaccurately or skipped. When this occurs, it's important to guide the student to decode the word correctly, then provide additional practice with that specific phonics um, and decoding skill if necessary. You may want to take notes of those words or skills that your child is struggling with so you can give additional practice over a period of time. Lauren is going to talk more about this strategy in her repeated reading um, and that repeated reading helps students develop that word recognition from that ex, uh, repeated exposure. Um, when children are first learning to read, they are taught to track, they're often taught to track with their fingers. But we should always remember that we want to stress reading smoothly from the very beginning. So we teach them to track with their fingers so they go from left to right to, and top to bottom. But sometimes uh, children are taught to tap the words, to tap under the words as they read. And we always want to encourage from the very beginning that they read smoothly. So I always teach my children to slide their finger carefully under the words and never to tap them. Um, we teach them to slide the finger so that that prevents them from using that kind of robot reading voice. And one way to focus on finger tracking correctly is I um, like to do Reading Ralph or Reading Rosie in my classroom. So you just put a little um, smiley face sticker on the fingernail and then we tell them that Reading Ralph or Reading Rosie only slide, they don't tap. Um, you can also watch this little video tip on our YouTube page. It's a full video. When teaching beginning reading skills, it's important to teach fluency from the start, meaning after teaching or reviewing a skill, be sure to provide ample time for repeated practice using the skill in many words um, and also within a context or a, a sentence, a paragraph, a passage. In this lesson, I'm showing how to teach letter sound fluency, then moving into using some of those same letter sounds within the words and also providing additional pra practice to begin to develop the word recognition. Another great way to enhance fluency is to do a skill focus before reading the text. Before reading a required text, pull out some of those more challenging words and identify the letter sounds or the phonics skills that may present the biggest challenge and then practice those skills before reading the text. In this featured activity, I'm reviewing the letter sounds, then the words, and then those sounds that I even pulled, um, I pulled a, a sample sentence from the text for additional practice. This helps build, especially when you have those hesitant readers who sometimes you can tell get a little uncomfortable or stressed when it's coming, when we're coming into a reading activity. Um, this gives them a sense of confidence as they enter into the text and it kind of reduces an anxiety. So they know that they're going to be successful. Um, you can see that there's the full text behind me in that picture uh, on the whiteboard. So I'm just pulling out some of the smaller skills, going over them, reading a small bit of the passage. And then when the child comes to the passage, they're not as, they're not as nervous and they're feeling successful. So this video, um, I, I do the whole video example also, is also on our YouTube page and it's called Preparing Readers for Success. Okay, this is one I featured last night. It's another one of our free resources that is available to you on our website under the LEC sources. Um, you go to instructional resources and this is called the Lexplore reading routine. And I absolutely love this and I use this for many um, purposes. 
this is a it's a skill packet and it's divided into three parts and it's organized by this um, the phonics skills in a systematic way so you can find sounds um, and word lists for all of the phonics skills to provide additional word recognition practice and then it's also a wonderful instructional resource to have on hand um, just to have those word lists available for you when you're planning your phonics lessons and your fluency lessons. <laughs> now, this is a super exciting um, resource that we will be offering very soon. It takes those, um, it takes all, it's a digital version of that resource I just shared with you. It takes all of those reading lists and it's it's a digital version, so you can use it on your uh, devices. It has the the words and the sounds, but it will also have sentences. And then in addition to that, it has uh, several modes. So this mode that I'm showing you here is the partner read mode. So the partners can take turns reading, um, you know, the different lines. So one, they each have their own icon, their own icon for, uh, to indicate when it's their turn to read. So this one will be exciting. So keep your eyes out for um, any announcements on the Lexplore Intensive. And now Lauren is going to walk us through some repeated reading steps. Yes, thanks, Janet. So I use repeated reading. Um, when I was in the classroom, I would use it for my struggling readers that were kind of below grade level. And then I also, um, as an intervention teacher, I will teach parents how to do repeated reading. And it's really a great routine to use with beginning readers or struggling readers. It's going to help them with a lot of the things that Janet just mentioned, um, but also decoding, word recognition, some sight word recognition, fluency. And then the part that I love is you really start to build that confidence and you'll hear it when, you know, when they start having that fluency, you'll see the confidence. And so the goal of repeated reading is fluency after reading the same story three times. And I'll go into how that works. We can go to the next slide. And so here's the materials that you'll need for this strategy. Again, this can be done in the classroom. It can be done, you know, parent-child, or it can be done kind of in, in an intervention scenario, or even virtually. It can, you know, you just have the same items, but more projected on your computer. Um, but I say, you know, one of the best ways to do this is you want to be prepared and so have a bag or a bin prepared with two to three books at your student's reading level, um, post-its or small pieces of paper, and then a pen or pencil or something to write with. So for, um, for repeated reading, you're going to want to do uh, read the same story three times, but it'll occur, you know, one time a day. And so let's say you start the book on Monday, you're going to read the same book on Tuesday and on Wednesday. So I'll go over what that first reading looks like. So let's pretend it's Monday and you, you know, have a time and a place where you're doing repeated reading with the student. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull out the book. Um, and you're going to make sure, again, I'll kind of go back and I'll, I'll repeat this at the end, but the book needs to be at the student's level. Um, and it should be between uh, five and ten pages, should be a short book with one to four sentences on each page. And it should be words that they either um, can decode or cite words that they've been exposed to. So we want to set them up for success there. But anyway, let's say it's Monday and this is the first reading of the story. So you put the book in front of your student and you just have them look at the cover and the pictures before reading. I call it a picture walk. So the purpose of it is just to kind of like rev up the engine to get them um, thinking about some of the words that might be in the story. Um, and I always kind of scaffold, you know, I read a story with a student this morning and had the game chess, you know, so as we solved the game, you know, I asked her if she knew what that was and she did chess and that just made that word easier to read later. Um, so while the students are reading, have, them, have him or her track 
um, the words just as Janet said with the finger sliding underneath the words. And when the student gets to a word and struggles with it, either makes an error or is unable to read the word, you can ask in this first reading, you know, does that sound right? You know, let's try sounding it out. But after one try, if there are, you know, after you give them that one, you know, try to fix it, if you, you don't want to push them into the frustration level with this first reading. And so after I, you know, say, let's try to sound it out. If they don't get it, then I'm going to sound it out for them, or I'm going to tell them that sight word and they can repeat. But we really want as minimal frustration for that first reading. We want it to be enjoyable for the student. And so as the student's reading, you're going to be writing down the words that the child struggles with on that post-it and post it or paper. And so when the student is done reading, you'll have this list of words to go over. And you know it's at the right level if you have somewhere around 10 words on that, on that post-it, somewhere between you know, five and 10 words. Um, if you have many more words than 10, then that book might be just too hard for them. And if you just have you know, one or two words that they're missing, then, it, then likely that is a book that they can read independently. And so you don't need to read that book three times. So we'll go to the next slide for the second reading. So you put the book away after they've reviewed um, the post-it and you're gonna say, great job. And then the second day you pull out that same book with the post-it. And before you have them read the story, you're going to have them review the words on the post-it. And so the student might need help sounding out the word, but you can give them a little bit more independence here, you know, asking them to look at the sounds or, you know, drag their finger underneath. Um, so go through the words a couple times so that they have some confidence with those words. And then you're going to reread, the, the student is going to reread the story. And this time again, give them slightly more independence. You can use phrases like, let's try that word again. Does it sound right? Let's try sounding it out. Again, not pushing them to frustration level, but just giving them a little bit more independence. Once they're finished with that second reading, you're going to again have them review the words on the post-it. And then you can put it away. Always encourage them, lots of encouragement. It's hard work reading in the beginning. And so tell them, great job. I really liked how I heard you sound some words out or you got this word right where it was a hard before. Or you can even start encouraging, you know, it started to sound like you're talking. I heard some expression. You're really sounding like a reader. All right, so now we're here on Wednesday and you're going to pull that book out for a third reading. So you show the student the book again and the post-it from the second reading. And this time the student's going to read those words on the post-it. But at this point, the word should be read with a little bit more ease. After they review the post-it, they'll read the story for the third time and it'll likely sound more fluent. Um, even before this reading, you can encourage them, you know, let's try some expression, you know, I saw some question marks or exclamation marks. You can encourage some expression here because they've read it. They've, they have some fluency with this story. If they do have any challenge with words, not a problem, write them on the post-it. Uh, but the goal for this third reading is that there would really be between zero and two errors. If the student struggles with three or more words, just go ahead and add a fourth reading. Um, and then also if it just doesn't sound quite fluent, you know, you could add a fourth reading. Now, one of the things you'll have to do, especially if it's an older student, you know, get them on board. We're reading like this because this is what's going to get you to the next level. Um, a lot of times they're going to feel the confidence. They're going to enjoy that they're able to read the book a little bit more with ease. But a lot of times I just like to get them on board. Like, we're doing this to help you reach your goal in reading, you know. So that's always helpful. But if the um, story was read with zero to two errors and with some fluency, you know, congratulate the student for finishing the book, that they really sounded so smooth, that it sounded like they were talking, and you're so impressed. Um, and sometimes I'll make, like, you know, if they do really well with kind of that praise, I'll make some sort of chart. And I'll say, okay, we finished this book, you know, add a star, add the name of the book to their list, but some way to kind of mark and anchor that success for them and to notice how it feels to read a book successful. So that's how you're going to continue to get them to do hard things, right? They have to feel the success. So we'll go to the next slide. This is just some tips. So Again, if, um, to look for the right book for repeated reading, 
Um, if the student reads the whole book with zero to one or even two errors, that book's too easy, so there's no need to read that book again unless you, unless you really want to work on the fluency with that book. Um, if your student misses 10 or more words, that book is probably too hard. Um, and you're going to, going to want to use books for this exercise that have somewhere between five, 10, maybe 12 pages with just one to five sentences on each page. And if you're using a much longer book, you can divide it into sections, but sometimes it's nice to just have a very tangible book that they can finish in a five to 15 minute time period. And so a lot of these books will be like for the younger guys like Bob books or um, you know decodable books that come with curriculum or you can print them off your computer or even those like beginning level books you'll see those in the library libraries like beginning level one beginning level two and kind of progress through that um, and then i know lexplore has a great way to determine their grade level and can give you resources about what books would match that okay one more slide uh, so really, you know, with fluency, when I think of fluency, I really think about daily reading practice. And so I begin to hear it in my students, both in the classroom and through intervention, when their students are really reading daily. It makes such an impact to read, you know, five days a week, you're going to start hearing some of that fluency. Um, so I always tell parents, you know, especially, you know, when they go home, it's so important to pick, you know, a time and a place you're going to read with your student because they really need that adult support. And so I tell them, you know, think through with your child, when would be a good time? If it's right before dinner, you know, set your alarm clock for or your phone or your watch for 5.30 and then, you know, know where you're going. At 5.30, we're always going to meet at the couch. Or, you know, in the morning, we're going to meet on the beanbag, you know, 7.30 before school, whatever it might be, but just have a plan and then have the supplies there ready to go. And a lot of times there's going to be pushback when it's beginning readers because it's hard work. So I always encourage incentives, motivation, and then, of course, to anchor the success when you have it because that's such an important feeling for them, that pride. So thank you, and if you have any questions about repeated reading, feel free to reach out. Thanks, Lauren. Okay, so now we're going to move to expressive reading. What is prosody? Um, now, um, what is prosody? Prosody is reading with expression, uh, phrasing, and acknowledging the punctuation with pauses and intonation. Um, phrasing is when readers can scoop up those meaningful small groups of words when, and when they create a smoothness and a rhythm in their reading. Prosody can also indicate that a student understands the tone or the feeling of the text, which then indicates that the student is deriving some meaning from the text. This is just one of the many building blocks of reading comprehension. Reading with expression it includes reading with inflection, um, meaning that the voice is raises, raise or pause appropriately for punctuation. Um, there is emphasis on the correct words. The tone of voice is aligned with the character's feelings and the events of the story. Um, there are many activities we can use to help our students develop expressive reading skills. Students can practice changing um, the, the connotation of, or the emphasis on words to change the connotation. Um, punctuation also aids in appropriate expressive reading. And we have some great resources to share for this strategy. Readers can practice matching their voice tones to characters um, during partner reading and uh, partner reading experiences and also during readers theater, which we'll talk about. Um, here's an example of how changing the emphasis can change the connotation and the meaning. Listen to how the connot connotation changes when I play, uh, place the emphasis, emphasis on different words. Um, so she is holding my favorite shirt. She is holding my favorite shirt. She is holding my favorite shirt. You hear how the changing, how changing the emphasis changes the meaning of the sentences. Well, students have so much fun with this one. 
um, pausing appropriate, appropriately for punctuation can determine the meaning that is derived from the text. So um, I always like to use anchor charts and I using anchor charts and practicing the reading behaviors for each punctuation mark explicitly develops and enhances these expressive reading skills. So these are some free anchor charts that we have available um, to download on Lexplore.com. It's in the same place under the Lex sources in the instructional resources. And this, these are actually from our, um, our fluency, our instant access activities fluency guide. Um, when practicing these skills, text, we should, you should definitely use authentic and meaningful texts, and you can use text from across the content area. So it's always great to infuse fluency um, in all subjects. So if the students are learning the Gettysburg Address, this is a great time to practice pausing for punctuation or phrasing. Um, partner reading activities should always be structured in a way where the expectations are clear. They're only successful if um, you're, you're really diligent about keeping up with those expectations. And then when you are and you've established these strong routines, um, the students are always so fully engaged. So when creating partners, I usually do it heterogeneously and I'll have uh, one that the strong reader um, coach the reader who is at a slightly lower reading ability and I also I'm I'm really big on anchor charts and I have these anchor charts in my room that I'm constantly referring to in the beginning of the school year when we're first starting out the partner read activities I'm really um, you know I, I go through it all the time just to really build a strong routine now I'm in re remote learning so <laughs> it's a little tricky to do partner read um, but what I do do is I I encourage the partner read behaviors at home with the parents and so I do send this one home um, digitally and then there's a little checklist there that I also use um, for partner read activities I have them place a blank one in front of them and then they go over it after the readings so readers theater, um, readers theater, the, the students need to reread their parts several times to practice for fluency. And this provides the perfect opportunity for practice. And it also, it also in easily engages the students. You know, often students, you know, especially the struggling readers, they, they sometimes are hesitant to, for that um, fluency practice, but they love readers theater and I love readers theater. It's very enjoyable. Um, you can sometimes download scripts from the internet or probably teachers pay teachers, but I actually create scripts from the decodable text that include the phonics skills that we're working with. Now, this does take a little bit of time, um, but the scripts that I use now, I created 15 years ago. So it's actually the same original copies too, which is pretty funny. But um, so that was time well spent and I use them all the time and even actually some of my name tags are the original. So I create these character nameplates uh, necklaces. So uh, each student is assigned a character and then wears the corresponding necklace. And then the class is divided into groups depending on how many characters are needed for each story. Um, I usually, the groups have varying ability, um, reading ability within the group, so all readers are supportive. Um, so the students are given time to practice their parts and then they give performances to the rest of the class. Now sometimes I'll let them go down to the office or read to the principal. Um, and then the next day they stay within their same group, but then we switch the nameplates so they have different characters. Now I'm very intentional with this in my selection of characters because um, the characters, the, the lines for the characters usually vary in complexity. So my students performing below, like below average for reading will get easier parts on the first day. And then the second day, they get slightly more difficult parts, but they've already had a day of hearing the part the day before. So it's not a total cold read. And then, so that also gives them that little confidence. And then on the third day, that reader will get an even more challenging part. Um, but at this point, they have heard that part for two days. So this is such a great fluency builder, but even more importantly, it is a wonderful confidence builder. 
Okay, so the ultimate goal of reading instruction is getting our readers in a good place when they're reading silently. So silently at a good pace and with understanding of what they are reading. Um, in the past, when students were reading silently, the only way to tell if they were reading fluently and understanding was with comprehension questions, which is actually a pretty indirect assessment and really doesn't give the whole picture. The Lexplore reading assessment makes it possible to check for fluency in our silent readers. The portal provides the recordings of the eye tracking movements and also an audio recording. So just like phonics skills, it's important to monitor and assess um, the speed and accuracy when assessing fluency. So the Lexplore reading assessment uses the AI and the eye tracking to assess accuracy and speed. Um, you'll see the large bubbles that shows the words that the student is fixating on the longest. This is this one I'm going to show you right now is actually a fluent reader. So the, the bubbles are relatively small and the saccades or the area where the student's eyes glide across the text, um, they show limited regressive movements. So her eyes are moving at a good and steady pace, but this is a fluent reader. Lee's friends love to stop at the corner store for candy. When the bell rang, kids rushed into the crowded halls to locate their friends and head to the store. Lee leaned on her crutch and observed. So that's an example of one of the um, eye tracking recordings. And then Please, friends. Um, here are two silent reading examples. And the one on the left sh uh, shows a more fluent reader. And the example on the right shows a struggling reader. So you can see the regressive eye movements and the larger fixation bubbles in the example on the right. So in addition to the GLE and um, with the grade level equivalency and uh, the reading level, their, and the fluency rate, the teachers will have this valuable visual recording to see exactly where the student is struggling. So here we have our silent readers and you can see the, the, the bigger bubbles on our reader on the right. And you can see which words the reader is getting um, stuck on. Okay, so there are many free downloadable uh, resources available on our website. Um, all of those punctuation anchor charts I was showing you and checklists are all there. Um, and there's also instant activities that you can use um, also for fluency and all of the other five components. So in addition to these resources, there, there are also um, video webinars and small instructional videos that are lunch with Lexplor. You'll see the actual um, activities being implemented. Okay, so before we wrap up today, Melissa, did we have any questions in the Q&A? Yeah, we've got several questions. Um, one quick question is, um, what sites online can we get readers theater scripts from? Where can um, we find that's, that's a really good question. I, I actually make, I make my own and I use the decodable text that I use in my lessons, um, okay. in my small group lessons, but I would guess teacher pay teachers is, would be the first place I would look. Okay. So could this um, person who's attending, could they reach out to you? Cause you, you'll have your contact information on the last slide and yes. they can uh, just reach Directly. I'll put it up now while we're talking. Okay, great. And then um, uh, one of our favorite attendees, he is, uh, uh, he's been attending every night. So we are thankful for, uh, for Tom and he's got several questions here. And um, I'm just so appreciative for his curiosity. Um, his first question is with repeated reading, particularly with simple texts, how do you avoid the child just memorizing the text, but in a superficial way, like relying on known order, story, rather than automaticity of the words? Or should you just always swap text before you get to that point? And if the latter, how many times do you think it is valuable for a child to read the same book? Does that make sense? What do you yeah, think? Yeah. I can kind of I can kind of answer that in a few different um steps so um 
I think one of the things that you're going to want to do when you're doing repeated reading, again, it usually is with a student that is either a beginning reader or a struggling student, you know. So helping them get on board, you know, we're going to work together to read these words and we're gonna be decoding and it's gonna get easier. We just have to get through this hard part, you know. So get them on board would be my, my first, you know, item for that. Um, and then memorizing is going to happen. And I don't totally shy away from that. But like I was reading with a reader, doing repeated reading, you know, this morning, and you can definitely tell when memorizing is happening because they're going to start guessing on some words. So I had a student this morning, you know, and I could tell she memorized some of it, but then she was missing some words. You know, I just kind of stopped her and said, let's really use our finger underneath the words and let's really sound them out and let's try not to guess. You know, and I've worked with her for a while, so I can kind of say that and know that she'll respond okay to that. And so you'll, you'll hear when they're missing memorizing because they're going to start guessing on words and they're going to start having errors where they could decode it. So I would just encourage them, let's slow down and decode that word. And this is how we're going to get better. So I'm not, and then some words are just going to be memorized and that's going to just continue with the fluency. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is that, um, you know, I think three times for these beginning level books is appropriate. Once they get to be higher level readers, reading, um, reading a text, you know, three times can be helpful for comprehension also, but um, I think three times is, I think that would be my answer is an appropriate time, though sometimes they're going to want to read it a fourth time with a lot of fluency, you know, and so there's, they'll probably be words memorized, but they're going to have words that they still need to really focus in on and make sure it's the right one. Okay. Um, Janet, did you want to add anything to that? Um, no, I, I, I would agree 100% with Lauren. Okay. And then um, one other question that he had is, what are some motivation techniques that you find most effective? And that's our final question for tonight. Uh, he's got some great questions. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, I, 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 th I think, first of all, the, the first motivation is modeling. And I demonstrate all the time, my love for reading. And we, you know, I do that often through, um, you know, the read alouds, but also we do close reads. And during the close reads, mostly, I do a lot of think alouds. And I think aloud and I, and, and meaning I will um, verbalize what my thinking is. And those are usually, that's usually a comprehension strategy um, to teach children how to think for comprehension purposes. But um, it's also an opportunity to talk about how much you're enjoying the book and, um, and how much you, you know, you love reading. So I think just um, modeling that in the classroom and always demonstrating um, the love of reading, I think also helps get you know, I, I do that with my own children at home, too, in addition to, you know, my, my students. Um, and also, you know, just having them, teaching them the value of reading and, and, and making them want to do, to read more. It's, I, I think, has a lot to do with how you present. Um, so, you know, and there are a lot, there are a lot, a lot of different um, motivational little um activities you can do with like charts and whatnot, but I, I really think that is that is one of the most important um, to motivate our readers. What do you think, Lauren? Yeah, exactly. I completely agree. You know, when I see students, um, when it's beginning to click or they're having success, their pride, if you kind of let them sit in it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, like tell them what you see like I see a smile on your face and your shoulders you know are kind of up like you're proud of yourself do you feel proud of you you know it's so easy because they'll have that felt sense of like I did it and it was hard you know and I think one of the things with reading is it can be really hard and a lot of work and so sometimes I talk to parents about we just have to like work on that perseverance to working through hard things and working on that muscle and other things that aren't reading can sometimes help motivate a struggling reader and then yeah of course charts are great for those readers that just really have a lot of resistance and you just really need that practice to get in there mm -hmm. any other questions I think that's it Tom says thank you so I think that's a wrap for tonight and um you want to wrap this up
Sure. Okay. Thanks so much. And please don't hesitate to reach out um, if you have any more questions to myself or Lauren. Um, Lauren, thank you so much again. I, you know, this has been a wonderful experience working with you and we certainly appreciate all of the helpful tips and tools that you're sharing with us. So thanks so much. Um, and we appreciate everyone who was attending today. We hope you'll join us next week for Lexplore's clear view of reading, um, comprehension and vocabulary webinars on Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday night. Um, so please head over to our website and check out all those free resources. And thanks so much for coming. And hopefully we will see you next week. Have a great day.